My name is Adam Manis. My name is Peter Martin. You're listening to the You'll Hear It podcast. Jazz Talk. <laughs> jazz Talk brought to you by Open Studio. Go to openstudiojazz.com. Yes. To go on a deeper dive on most of the things we'll be talking about. And this is a great time to come and check in on Open Studio Pro. It really is kind of the best time. New Year is coming up, or maybe even past, depending on where you are in the world. Yeah. Uh, or where, when you're listening to this. Happy New Year if you are listening to this in 2024. We made it! That's right. They said we wouldn't make it. We did. Yeah. yeah. Um, and by Wait, they, I mean said? George Orwell. <laughs> Uh, no, this is a great time to... It's if you would have said Jeff Bezos, I would have got worried. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with that. Well, notice he's got like a yacht that can survive a thermonuclear... I know, he's all up in space. Like, yeah, yeah. Where are you going, Jeff? <laughs> yeah, you know happening? something? Well, you know something we don't know? Uh, but, so no, this is a great time. Check out Open Studio Pro because... Or just regular Open Studio membership, whichever you know suits your fancy because... There's only two. Okay. We've only got two me- members. Well, that's what I said. Open Studio or Open Studio Pro. And for those of you who don't know, Open Studio is all of our pre recorded courses. Open Studio Pro is all of our pre recorded courses plus all of our live Zoom classes, at least yeah. two every day. Yeah. And kind of jumping in at the new year, um, I'm not exactly sure the timing of when it's going to be open because oftentimes it's closed, but you can always sign up at openstudiojazz.com slash pro to get on the priority wait list for well, that. Well, hint, hint. It's going to be soon. So okay, well, you you're know going stuff to want to get on the list, Mr. Yeah. Creative Director. Yeah, you're going to yeah, want yeah. to get on that. that and it's fun, list. like just to try new things. I know we've talked about in previous year, like New Year's resolutions and stuff, and pros and cons with that. But I think just in general, like with a new year, it, it's such a great time to kind of check in, maybe join in a new community, think about developing one's skills in a different way, recommit perhaps. Uh, of course, to yourself, but to the music, to you, to the instrument, to your development. And there's no better place. I'm biased, though. Yeah. But I would say there's no better place than Open Studio. Yeah. Go to OpenStudioJazz.com and sign up on that wait list. Peter. Yes. Today, we're taking some speak pipes. Now, we've got a very different uh, kind of speak yeah. pipe today. We've got yeah. a live in-person speak is pipe. Is this our first? Well, it's not live. It's This recorded. is the first one where we actually recorded where I, the question. Yes. Where I say we, it's you. Yeah. Yeah. You were playing at the Village Vanguard all last week. Yes. With Christian McBride. Yes. And Inside Straight. Inside Straight. Yeah. And a gentleman who's actually an Open Studio member oh, yeah. uh, approached Daniel. And um, uh, I got a, had a nice talk with him and he had some questions. And I said, you know what? I think other folks w- might be interested in this same question. Let's record something impromptu. And Daniel was game for it and kind enough to appear on camera. So should we just watch it? Yeah. Let's this is it out. from the grounds, the inside. The basement, the hallowed grounds oh, you could tell. of the Village Vanguard. You can see the stairwell That's right the there. That's the door there. Yeah. That's where they vibe you when you get to the bottom of the stairs if you have not Completely purchased necessary. your ticket. Completely necessary. <laughs> oh, shout out Quentin in the back. Great young drummer who actually works at the Vanguard certain nights. You can just see him in the background. He doesn't appear on here. Fantastic drummer that was in the Jazz Ahead program with uh, Betty Carter's Jazz Ahead. Oh, sweet. Yeah, you're going to be hearing a lot from him. You must have had a lot of people coming out to the show that you knew. I think every show was sold out, but it was cool. There's a great open studio contingent every night, every set. Uh, Mr. McBride, Mr. McBride, Christian McBride. Yeah. Mr. McBride, to you. That's and me, me, for sure. Um, but uh, he was kind enough to kind of talk about open studio on many of the sets. And we got Are some you kidding? Whoop, whoop. No, yeah. Really? Yeah, what? yeah. What did he say? Some fans of yours. Well, he just said, you know, Peter is the co founder of. Something really cool. If you want to learn about jazz, check out Open Studio. You know, he says it's so much better than the greatest. We could yeah. we could possibly say it. So cool. Let's check out. Uh, this is Daniel. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm here with my new friend Daniel, and I can't even tell you his last name because we're trying. No. Nope. All right. We're gonna have to beat that out. We're here. Where are we? Tell them where we are. We are at the famous Village Vanguard. The world famous Village Vanguard, <laughs> and Daniel has an in-person speak pipe. Our first ever in-person speak pipe. Go ahead and ask. All right. I asked Peter. Hold on. First of all, it'd be amazing <laughs> if you, at this point, got out your phone and made him actually go on to SpeakPipe. Like, go on to <laughs> Whereas That's where, by the way, if you want to use SpeakPipe, <laughs> don't go to the Village Vanguard unless you know Peter Martin's going to be there. But go yeah. to you'll Yeah. I'm just saying it would have been funny if you would have. For, Next uh, time. Shout out Daniel is... No, actually, I don't. Can I give out personal information about him? I would. His address? No, I wouldn't. No, but Daniel is 61 years old. Doesn't he look great? Shut up. I'm serious. Shut no, up. That's He's what he liar. told me. No. That's what he t- no, I think he is. He, he looks five years younger than me, and I'm 45. <laughs> well, that's, you know. Maybe he's friends with Jeff Bezos. Dang it. <laughs> but his philosophy is on tapping your foot to keep time while playing jazz piano. Right. And I've been wanting to ask this question for a while, and then I thought it would actually be better to watch Peter in person. Let's hear that again. Did we miss? Yeah. <laughs> oh, try it. No. Try to keep it All right. We're going to have to beep that out. We're here. Where are we? Tell them where we are. We are at the... We saw this part already, Adam. The world famous Village Vanguard. 
and Daniel has an in-person speak pipe, our first ever in-person speak pipe. Go ahead and ask. All right. I asked Peter what his philosophy is on tapping your foot to keep time while playing jazz piano. Right. And I've been wanting to ask this question for a while, and then I thought it would actually be better to watch Peter in person, right. see what he does in practice. In practice, I think is what yes. he was going to say. So, yeah, what did what did he come up with? Did he have an answer for that? Well, what was funny was he was, wait, him? No, no, he's asking us the I question. know, but did he notice anything on the gig? And did he have any notes? Because I don't think about my foot a ton when I'm performing. Yeah. I know I, I know I stomp and tap and do all sorts of things, but. Right. So apparently he was, he was with a teacher that recommended to him to tap in a certain way. And so he was asking me, you know, kind of, do I believe in that and blah, blah, blah. Um, and he wanted to see what I was doing. But what I told him is, I was like, I don't think that this is a uh, fruitful area to imitate how others do this. And the reason I would say this, like, like in other words, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer to this. I agree this. to that. Yeah. You know, and you know, I can be dogmatic about certain things, but this is one area I would say kind of anything goes. And that is only because I've, I have observed a little bit. I've, mm -hmm. I haven't done a scientific study on this, but I've definitely checked out different pianos and just different musicians in general that I really think are great players, right? Mm -hmm. um, and look to see how they're tapping their foot. And there's quite a variety. In, in other words, there's some people that tap in time, like on two and four or on all four, whatever, like some kind of metronomic type tapping. There's some other players that don't tap at all. Mm -hmm. And then there's some that seem that are seemingly randomly tapping mm -hmm. or like tapping with certain accents or something or a little bit less pattern based. Yeah. Um, and these are all like really like it would be so much easier if you saw like some lesser players or somebody who's kind of struggling or more beginner and they were tapping all over the place. And then all the really high level players were tapping in time. And then it'd be like, OK, you got to learn to tap in time. But I don't think the case that's the case. That hasn't been in my it's experience. It's not universal. Yeah. yeah. You know, just last week we had uh, the amazing Emmett Cohen on a mentor session. Yes. And he was talking a little bit about time. He was talking about a ballad, actually. But he he mentioned something that I it really resonated with me. And someone asked him, well, how do you approach like keeping time in a ballad? And it was like, well, you have to find the dance. Mm. So the first thing I do, he said, is to find the dance in the song. Yeah. Right. And I think that's kind of what you're talking about here. There's no like prescribed way to dance. Right. You know, in a in a if you're trying to just keep this the steady time. And so if you can find the dance, everybody's different. Everybody's is going to dance yeah. a little bit differently. Not but everyone's going to dance with their toes. I not mean, everyone's going to dance with their toes. Most I will say most people find it helpful to have some kind of physical movement to keep yeah. time with. Yeah. Because it is, rhythm is a dance. It is a physical movement. It is right. not intellectual. It has to be moved through space. Look at you. You're moving as you I, just talk Every time you just talk bop about it, tapping, bop it, bop Also, I think most high-level players, they're not consciously practicing this in right. a specific way. It's just kind of like what, at least for me anyway, it's just what has happened as yeah. I've as I've developed my time. Now, having said that, I do think that you there are certain things that you can do with tapping your foot or like one-handed things with tapping your hand yeah. uh, that can be effective when you're practicing. Yeah. So this was more, what I was speaking of is more about what you could observe from somebody as they're performing. I wouldn't take so much from that. I do think that you can teach, and you know, we've talked about Open Studio, different exercises um, that you would tap your foot as you're practicing, I think can be very effective. Like any kind of rhythmic practice or 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 things that are getting you, getting your limbs going at different times. So like if you're playing something with two hands and then you're having to do something different with your foot, that's going to get your rhythmic independence and ultimately your hand independence yeah. a leg up. Yep. That's horrible. <laughs> awful. It's just awful. Pull out quote. But so that would be, the, I, I think, probably the most important part of this is like, differentiate between how you tap your foot when you're practicing from how you do it when you're performing. So in other words, if you have some effective things that you, and we can talk about some ideas, but some effective things that you do in your practice, don't feel like you need to be consistent with that when you play. It's kind of like everything we talk about when you're performing is like, you want that to be a manifestation and kind of a continuation and sort of a destination from what you've worked on where you can be a little bit more unconscious with your body movements, with your hand position, with your fingering, all these different things. And this is a chance to just sort of let everything come out. 
having said that, mm-hmm. I had a little bit of problem because with Daniel was then we, that was between the sets, and he's like, oh, "I'm so excited, I'm staying for the second set, so I'm gonna." Re- now that you've told me these different things, I'm oh, gonna really no. be watching. You your were in foot. your head about your foot, weren't you? You were and thinking he was about it right there. Damn it! And so the whole second set, and I think he told me after he's like, "Yeah, you were a little more consistent with your." Because I was thinking t- about Daniel. <laughs> I was like, "Way to go, Daniel!" Yeah, <laughs> it's like uh, once you're observed, once nature is observed, it changes it. The observation <laughs> exactly. changes it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that was just a little bit. Um, but I don't think that they're in terms of what you could observe from somebody. I'd love to hear from people in the comments though, because I could be off bed. Like I say, I've not done a scientific study. I will say that we've, we've done lessons and courses with people like Sean Jones and Jeffrey Keezer. And both of them have talked about, if you notice, and I think Warren Wolf talked about this too, but if you notice people with really great time, not everybody, but a lot of them tap with their heel down. Like, so their, their heel is the, is the tapper yes, and the ball of their foot or right here in their foot yeah. is the fulcrum, right? And this brings your whole leg into play. If you tap your toes with your heel as the fulcrum. What are you, a structural engineer? Well, no, now? a little bit. But Amazing. if you do this, it kind of takes your leg out of it. It's a little bit harder to control. Uh huh. And if you le- yeah. use your whole leg as sort of an up and down. That's interesting. That's how I think a lot of people feel it. Sure. Is this what you do too, Peter? Yeah. yeah. That's how I do. My heel is the... And it keeps the, your balance, I think, at the instrument in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, because you're on the balls play. of your feet. Yeah. And then tempo matters for this as well. Like if you're playing one, two, F blues, and... This kind of medium tempo. Yeah. I'm tapping on all four beats. And he's tapping his whole foot. So but imagine this is the foot. I'm going to show you what he's doing. But let's say if we were to do like like an F blues, one, two, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I'm all on my heel. So I'm tapping on one and three. Interesting. So I'm yeah. tapping in halftime here, and that's for a couple of reasons. A, this is going to get tiring right. after a while. And B, if you're in halftime, it relaxes yeah. your feel as you're. It's like you're, you're, you're almost feeling the slower time and then double timing on top of it. It's like a two feel, right? Yeah. But you try to keep that sort of, and it's not two and four, right? Like, I forget. You want one and three all through that, right? It might have been Joe Chambers way back in the day told me once, like, the uh, uh, was Joe Chambers or Reggie Workman? It was someone, someone big at the new school that I was like just you know pie eyed studying with or whatever. But said the lower half of your body is for one and three, and the upper half of your body is for two and four. Mm. Like it's it's the nature of right. Of that but that's kind of like relationship. The original street beat. Yeah, New Orleans, that's the drum like kit. The, the like, drum. If your yeah. body is the drum kit, that you know you need to be grounded on the one. Right. Right. And so, but that's not you know if you're playing a ballad, two, three, four. You can't like it's going to be hard to tap on just one and three. Right. Like at this slower tempos, so I will definitely na- and this oh, is cool. just by I the way just what I'm naturally doing. I'm just naturally going to tap on. Yeah, all four beats, and like you said, it's not consistent. Right. It's not like I never tap on all four beats on a faster tempo. It's never. Yep. It's sometimes I don't tap at all. Yep. Sometimes I'm just kind of like. And I don't think there's any connection between oh, you're not feeling the groove when you're not like. It would be great if it was like that because then it'd be like okay, make sure you do this with your foot, everybody, and that'll line up. That'll line you up with the groove. But Can I make one more um, case for the one and three? Um, tapping or stomping state your case brother if you're playing a new piece of music it's a little bit faster yeah and you think about it as the bars are going by as like one two 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 three mm. two four it's just easier to keep the form actually yes. like if you're say you're like reading a complicated chart this is also good for sight reading like keeping this on the half half note for faster things it doesn't it kind of slows down the chart it slows down time a right because right? of the way it segments it you put it in two in your body Yep. One. And even sometimes you'll you'll notice Peter players, and I do this all the time, one is on the outside, two is on the inside of the heel. So my heel's like actually one, two, mm. two, 
to kind of interesting. Turn, to kind of give it this. Like, yep, yep, feel. yep, yep. I've definitely, I've definitely done that. Yeah. I think too, like with what you were saying with one and three when we were doing. Yeah. Where you'd be like, this would be the foot, or more like. Like a lot of people are afraid to do that because they're like, they need to have dang, dang, gang. But if you think about the feel. Either one can work. And in fact, that's a good way to practice with your tapping. And you could do it with the left hand also, which is like one, two, three, four, uh. So that's on two and four, right? Now, it goes to one and three. His foot has switched to one and three too. Switch again. So I think that like practicing like that, you might do one course on one and three and then switch to two and four. The idea is that you're still swinging and interacting with the groove in the same way, mm -hmm. but it's a little bit of just like a challenge, a little bit of simplify and isolate. But it's just to show that like, because I thought when I learned like the two and four thing, I was like, okay, I can see how that's important when you get to give that little bit of emphasis like the forward propelling of the groove but even if you're a boom the groove can still propel forwards right because i especially when you get to faster tempos i remember seeing mcbride in a clinic we were doing at indiana university where he was saying like for bass players bing, ding, 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 like he recommended either the ones per bar tapping and when he said tap i, I remember i don't know he might even said feeling it but also one and three he's like if you try to feel it on two and four he's like you still or feeling the, the groove moving forward on two and four, but it's like, it would be like, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Caleb and I just played a gig last week. Either where one the, can work, but like the one and three can be a, a nice place to place. What was that tune we did? The song is you or something like that? And the singer like counted it off there. Oh yeah. Da, 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 and that's exactly what I, at least what I was doing to get through it. One, two, three, yeah. four, one, two, three, was tapping like, on one. Right, right. There's also something that can happen, Peter. If we do another F blues, like one. Yeah, because people, sorry, just yeah, like yeah. they confuse. They think, oh, if you're on one, then it's not going to be swing. It's like once you get that swing feel, that's going to be there wherever you place that's your right. tapping. Yeah. And it should be. It's a good way to challenge yourself. And it yourself. actually, it's way more, like if you're doing something at that tempo, da 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 do 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 Like we were doing a C, but uh, what key are you in? E flat. E flat, yeah. So if you're doing one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah. Like if you if you can get that one going, you're gonna do some more interesting shit other than just like right. like try to well, overplay from try the Try that again and I'll play like a bass line which you'd be playing over. One, two, one, two, three, four. Yeah, that's you know? a great way to really be able to fly over it when they because you think you have to be doing that, you know. Remember that sprinkles. Wait and do that later. That stuff is sprinkles. Like, yeah. get the melody in you and and relax. One more thing I want to just say about this, and, and back to Emma Cohen's point about the dance of, yeah. of movement and keeping really, we're talking about feeling the music in our bodies. Yeah, is like if you notice, we do like something at a nice one, two, F blues, one, two, three, four. A lot of players, and I do this too. It's not just about the foot. There's a little sway that starts to happen in the rest of this. your body. There's the head, and we're not thinking about this. Maybe the gaze? Shoes gazing at the shoes. Yeah, you just this, this. Like, uh -huh. I do this a lot. I, I bob my head a lot, like up on the one. Just trying to, like, I, I think what I'm doing here, I don't even think about this. Get in the zone, baby! I, I am kind of, I'm dancing. Like, I'm trying to dance to the music to try to, like, Oh, 
it's helped so much, right? Because you're like, you're. It makes it first of all, it makes it kind of happy. It doesn't it help when you're relax. looking at you. That's why I was like, I look like an idiot. But no, that, don't. But, I can't <laughs> look at that. I can't look at the monitor. But no, like actually, like thinking about it, like I'm gonna dance yeah. with this music right now right. and to see what comes out. It's a huge part of it. Look at that. Look at the face he's making. Look at the. What? what? It's gonna what? bite his lower what? lip. Uh. Come on now. Yeah. Podcast listeners, if you could see that. <laughs> Well, this was great, man. Check Thank out the you YouTube to channel if you want to see it. And leave us a comment. Yeah, leave us a comment on YouTube. That's the gala right there. Gala. Also, but Peter, can we just talk? Shout out to our listeners. Yes. It's and our, our viewers. Yeah, and our viewers, but specifically to our podcast listeners. That's right. Uh, our viewers might not even know. This is the audio podcast. This too. is not our podcast. Stop looking at us. Stop. Go listen to us. <laughs> Don't look at us. <laughs> listen to the words coming out of my mouth, Don't, not the beautiful. Uh, Don't look at me. <laughs> Stop looking at me. <laughs> Stop looking at me. Yeah. Um, we no, love but, you wherever you enjoy it. Yeah. But wherever you're enjoying it, there is an agreement that you have entered into. It is the gala. Unbeknownst to, to the viewer or listener. The gentleman and the ladies' agreement. Why are we getting southern? <laughs> the gentleman. <laughs> okay. Uh, could you tell them what that agreement is? What, so, are, what, are the, what must they adhere to? Well, so first of all, our part of the agreement is we give you this free content. We yes. give you this beautiful... Well, it's not free. It is not free. We give you this great content. Right. <laughs> if we do say so ourselves the only payment that is required is you must go to youtube yeah leave us a comment gala times a million for this Ooh. one gala well, times we a never million. had it up that high i know we've had it times 10 so basically you're going to put gala times a million you can write that however you want in gala the comments on that in on the, the comments YouTube, even if you listen to this it's part of the deal yeah and yeah. look We've been looking at the stats. We don't always do that. But we've been looking. There's a bunch of you that are watching and listening over and over again, and you are not adhering to the gentleman and lady. And that's okay. Yeah. But it also means you're not a gentleman or a lady. That's right. Yeah. So hit the gala. Yeah. Times a million. That's right. And until next time. You'll hear it. I'm not a fan of jazz. Now, would that be something you might be interested in?